Okay, guys, we are back with another video in the Rising Storm 2 SDK tutorial series. Uh, today we're going to be covering something that's been requested a few times, how to add water to your map. Uh, a couple different ways to do this. I'll go with probably the most common um, if you're going to be adding water to a custom map. Uh, I've got the Jungle Camp map loaded up here. Um, if you're familiar with this map, it has some little streams around the edges, uh, cut through it, and so forth. Um, the, the way we uh, would add water, like we have seen here on this map, uh, two main things. The first one being a RO water volume, which you can find in your volumes uh, list over here on the left side of your panel. And you would just build this with your normal builder brush. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do it here in just a second. Uh, but this is what controls uh, how it slows down the player when you try to walk through it. Uh, it keeps you from proning, maybe, if the water is deep enough um, and to keep your player from going underwater. Uh, the thing we also want to do with uh, the uh, the water is we're going to place something on top of it so it has the appearance of uh, the, the surface of water. Uh, the old way to do this, and the I guess the way it's done in some of the maps here, is, is, uh, including the jungle map, uh, map, jungle camp map, is to use a fluid surface actor. So you can see this is, uh, if it shows up in your 2D viewport, I've got my meshes turned off, but it's this like pink square here, but it's uh, the grid uh, kind of looks like a pink terrain when you look at it. But this would lay directly on top of the water volume, and this is what uh, would uh, give the surface of the water its appearance. If you shoot it, it's going to splash, stuff like that. Um, so we can either uh, use that or something else. Uh, some of the other maps use Songbee. A lot of the, uh, the bigger maps that have a larger body of water would use um, like an actual static mesh on top. So a lot of these are specifically made for a certain shape, as you can see right here. So maybe if this is like a river on your map that, that this ma uh, water would fit, you could use something like this. If you have something that's a little bit more customized, um, you're completely fine using the fluid surface actor. Now the fluid surface actor is always going to be in this either a square or a rectangle shape. You're not going to be able to make these custom uh, shapes out of the fluid surface actor. So it's just a matter of uh, using what you think will be, be best for your map. So let me go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is to uh, obviously l probably lower the terrain um, in the area where you're going to either want your river, your stream, your pond, or puddle, or whatever it is that you want. So what I would normally use is the uh, terrain tool to do this, and what I like to, the approach I like to use just to make sure I get the uh, an even surface on the bottom. One thing you need to consider is if the water level, or if the bottom of your river or your lake is too deep, the player is just going to walk right under the water, and it's going to look silly, and you're going to be walking through the water. Uh, so if you check out most of the water on the on the vanilla maps, it's all very shallow, and that's why that is. Um, we don't want players laying down in it. We don't want players walking along and just simply walking underwater. Uh, you know, they're like they're in some old cartoon or something. So usually I want to lower it down, um, you know, maybe at 30, 40 UUs. Uh, you know, we can play with it, maybe 50 if, we, uh, if we're feeling a little uh, ambitious. But uh, what you're going to want to do is test it once you get it all done. So we will do that. But what I like to do is to see what, what is the height of my terrain right now so I can go into my terrain properties I click on it and hit F4 or I can just double click on it And if you go down to your location tab it's going to tell you now this terrain was set up uh, rather conveniently snap to the grid at zero so the terrain itself is at zero the height of the terrain as far as the Z axis is concerned so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna find a little empty spot out here I'm gonna grab my terrain tool I'm going to make it, eh, I'll use the biggest one. Whenever I'm messing around with building uh, the terrain, uh, I usually turn down the strength of my tool. Otherwise, you get these you know, huge lumps, huge jumps in the terrain. For this one, that doesn't really going to matter because we're going to use this flatten tool, which uh, you can see on the left side of the tool, uh, terrain tools menu with the red line over the top of it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click that. Now I'm going to set the height that I want to lower the terrain down to. So 
Uh, for this option, I'm going to go a little bit deeper, and then what I'm going to do is lower the water. So we'll do negative 70. Uh, if you'll remember in the game, most of your uh, the, the player itself is between 90 and 100. Uh, you use tall, so you know anything over over 70 or 80, you're going to be underwater. But I, I want to lower it a little bit lower. I'm not going to have the water even with the top of the terrain, so we'll play with this a little bit and just see where it gets us. But I'm going to switch over to wireframe view. It's a little bit easier to see uh, when you're manipulating the terrain. Uh, I've got my uh, flatten tool selected here, negative 70. Now I'm just going to hold down le uh, control and I'm going to left click. And as you can see, it's going to lower everywhere I touch to negative 70. So we'll do that. Now what I normally like to do, you know, this isn't most uh, bodies of water. I guess we'll just pretend this is a lake for now rather than a river. But, you know, most bodies of water are not going to be this uh, steep here on the edges so a lot of times what I'll do is grab my smoothing tool maybe lower down the strength just a hair so I can at least uh, control it a little bit I'm just gonna hold down control and then left click around these edges smooth out these edges a little bit and once I go back into uh, unlit mode you'll be able to to see exactly how that looks a little bit better but we at least have a little dip in the terrain you know maybe a pond might be a little bit uh, lower than that Oop, and as you can see I've got a this thing poking through the bottom. I'm just going to lower this down because this is more for uh, decoration than anything else. But, you know, lower that down a little bit. So, here we can see we've added the uh, little dip in the terrain. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and add my uh, RO water volume. So, in order to do that, we're going to need the brush tool. We can switch to our uh, geometry mode if it makes it a little bit easier. We can build a brush if we want to. I've already got one over here somewhere. Let's see. This it? Yeah. So I'm going to drag that over here. Now for this, uh, the thickness of it isn't too important because it can go under the terrain. It's not a big deal. And when I have the uh, geometry tools option selected, I can also see faces on this builder brush a little bit better. And if you recall where we put the, uh, the body water. So this is going to be way too big. So I'll just go ahead and resize this a little bit to get what, exactly what I want. But when you're in the uh, geometry tools, you know, you can click on this. So I've just got this one side. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. I can turn my terrain on, off and on with the T key, which makes it a little bit easier. Now, maybe I want to keep this a little bit bigger just in case. Uh, I, I want to make this pond a little bit bigger. And the uh, water volume can always be adjusted as well. So not the end of the world if you end up uh, wanting to make some some changes. Now something that is important, now I want to lower this down. So we're going to lower this down a little bit below the top lip of my, there we go. And as you can see when I do that, you can only see it in the lowered area. So probably somewhere in, in that region here. Let me play with this just a bit more because we don't necessarily want it all the way up to the top but you know maybe I could have made this a little bit deeper and it, it might have looked a little bit normal so anyways we've got the builder brush here it's way too long I'm not gonna mess around with resizing the ends but you get the point here now I've got the builder brush built I'm gonna right click here on my volumes button and I'm just gonna go down to RO water volume and that converts my builder brush now into the RO water volume and let me just get this out of the way. You won't be able to see it until you move your builder brush, but there it is right there. So there's my water volume. And once again, since I'm in geometry tools, I can play with this. I can move this around if I wanted to, if I wanted the water to be right up to the edge, whatever it is I want to do. So that's how you add the water volume. Next, we'll add the top of the water. Okay, now that we've added the water, which you can't really see here because I don't have the volume selected, uh, we're going to slap right on top of it our fluid surface actor. So if we can either copy a fluid surface actor from another map, if there's one you like and uh, you know the materials are connected to it and all that, or we can make our own. So today we'll practice making our own. If I go up to my actors classes here in my content browser, I'm going to go down to fluid surface actor click on that plus sign to expand it and what we want is the RO fluid surface actor and then what we can do is right click where we want to put it our add RO fluid surface actor here which we can see it comes with the default material which is absolutely fine now what we want is we want that to lay right on top of our uh, water volume so we can come to this view right here we can see where our water volume was or placed I guess you could say 
Now, uh, it's still there, it's just invisible, and you won't actually see the water volume itself, but it is there. Now, the fluid surface actor is, just comes in this default size of whatever this is, probably, you know, at 2,000 UUs in each direction. We're, we are going to want to make this a little bit bigger. So I can either go to my scale tool, which you see right here, I'm going to, I'm going to stretch it out, and it's going to expand it in all directions. A little uh, trick I have found to, uh, I guess, keep it just going in one direction. And some of you may be aware of this. If I switch my scale mode right here, I can choose non-uniform scaling. And if I want, I can just pull it this way. So I've got kind of a longer, if I wanted to make this pond a little bit longer, I could do so uh, without having to worry about, maybe I want to put a ditch right here, like a tunnel system. I don't have to worry about this fluid surface actor interfering with that. Uh, so that's how we place that on top. Now we can use the default settings. Uh, which you can see here, if you crack open a map like Jungle Camp, you'll see a lot of the, the settings have been changed, and you can uh, just compare your fluid surface actor to theirs. You can copy theirs and slap it on yours. Uh, the only thing really left to do is to put a uh, some sort of material on here, and there are a bunch of different ones. You know, depending on maybe you got a sunny map, you got a, a dirty water, moving water, things like that. So. I can just grab any of these. If I just search for water, and I usually want to bring up either uh, your material instances or just plain materials, uh, just depending on the one you want. But I can drag. This is the water from the camp. This is uh, this is the uh, water, I guess, from Huey. So I pull that down there. And you know, some of them are more uh, see-through than others. You can see this one has some sort of cube map applied to it, where I'm getting you know the sunny skies of uh, of that map applied here so you can also copy these and tweak with the settings if you want to uh, use it as your own you know you can change a lot of the fog how transparent the water is and things like that so uh, what we'll do real quick I'm going to save and then we'll just jump into the map and see how uh, it reacts to different things So we will run up to uh, the water we created here. Uh, a lot of times, too, maybe I'd switch the terrain material around the water and under the water, give it more of a uh, like a wet look or something like that. But as you can see, I can shoot it. It's reacting appropriately. Um, we'll see if we can, if it'll let us. See, it's not going to let me. It'll let me crouch because the water is not that deep, but it's not going to let me prone. I'm hitting uh, hitting my prone key here, and it's just not going to let me. Uh, a lot of times, it'll also give you a warning but uh, so we've got that the only last thing to try maybe try to throw in a grenade on it now one thing we didn't do oh it didn't matter let's change the, the collision but uh, that did not seem to matter here now sometimes you do get some of this weird splashing up high uh, and a lot of that might just be the fact that we're playing with some pie so something to test uh, you know later on but that's uh, pretty much sums up how you complete uh, the water, add water to your map, you can uh, you can make it a river stream, things like that. So uh, play around with a little bit. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. I uh, try to try to respond uh, promptly. Or join us here in the modding Discord for Rising Storm 2. I've got the address uh, linked right here, and I'll put it in the description as well. So uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll have more tutorials here coming up soon. Thank you.